All right, we are just past the hour, so we will get started here. Um, my name is Caroline. I'm with Wayfront by VMware, um, and I'm going to take care of a few quick housekeeping items before we turn it over to Rick. So first of all, if those of you who are on, if you can hear me, if you could type hello in the chat box, we can make sure our sound is working here. Perfect. Um, we also have Rick on the line with us. Rick, if you want to say hello, make sure we can hear you as well. Hello. Yeah, um, I'm muted now, so I can uh, talk to you. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Perfect. And then we also have Justin, who will be joining us later for a Q&A. So if Justin, Justin, if you can pop on and say hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, Justin here. Thank you. Awesome. OK, looks like we can hear everyone. Um, just for your information, we will be recording this webinar. And afterwards, I will make this available to all so you can rewatch it. Um, another thing to note is that we are doing a Q&A at the end of the session. So if at any point during the webinar you have any questions, just type them in the chat box and then we will get to them at the end and answer them. So with that, I'm going to hand things off to Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Um, yes, yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to start with a few slides to, uh, to introduce Wavefront to you. Um, after the slides, I'm actually going to go into a demonstration and show you uh, what Wavefront is and how you can use uh, metrics to analyze a situation and quickly get to an anomaly. Um, I'll go through what we mean by uh, metrics and what our um, database is and how we query against that database. And then, as Caroline said, we'll, we'll open up to some uh, questions afterwards. If there's any questions, just uh, uh, fire them into the chat and uh, we'll, we'll get to those questions at the end. Um, so, by way of introduction, my name is Rick Cronin. Um, I look after the technical side of, of Wavefront for Europe. It's a recent acquisition by VMware. Um, we have an, many customers in the US and quite a few customers in Europe already. Um, but we provide um, metrics-based monitoring and analytics. And the reason why we do this is for these three main areas on this slide here. So we know that our enterprise customers are starting to see an increase in the, in the complexity of applications with their uh, adoption of microservices and containers. We know that they're working hard to, to move into a continuous delivery, uh, continuous deployment uh, regime for applications, especially new applications. And with that, they're starting to look at uh, agile and DevOps processes to, to help support that more agile process. And because of the new technologies that, that our enterprise customers are starting to, ad to adopt, we see that there's there's a lack of a unified visibility. So we can't we can we can't see the whole application stack from from a number of different places. So we can't see uh, the operating system metrics with the application container metrics and uh, the application performance plus. The, uh, the customer view of, of that, the customer experience. So it's very difficult to get a, a single view of, of the, the, the status of that application. So Wavefront is uh, a software as a service based metrics monitoring and analytics platform. It's based in the cloud. You take your metrics from um, many different sources and push them into Wavefront in, in the cloud. We can collect data from multiple cloud sources, from your infrastructure that's still on, on premise. We can take uh, metrics from different types of, of technologies that uh, support web, uh, native uh, cloud technologies, uh, microservices, etc. And we give you the ability to, to visualize those in either pre-configured dashboards or dashboards that you've built yourselves using that query language that I'll, I'll show you later on. 
Those dashboards can be used by multiple different uh, parts of your business, whether that's the site reliability engineer, the development teams, the DevOps managers, or part of the business. So if there's a business area that needs to see uh, key performance indicators uh, that, that support the business, then you can provide them with a dashboard that's very specific to their requirements. So what does Wavefront give you that's uh, a differentiator? The first thing is that we have that advanced query driven analytics um, platform. So we can provide you with uh, a set of more than 100 functions to apply to uh, a data store that collects your data as often as every second. And that data is raw, it's not, um, it's not aggregated in any way. So you can, you can query um, raw data and get uh, a lot of different functions to, to perform against that, whether that's mathematical or logical uh, queries against that data. Uh, we have the ability to scale massively, so we can take on 4 million uh, points per second and bring that into our data store, and we can allow you to query against that data um, for up to a year, two years, three years um, in one hit, and, and actually uh, put that into a graph. Um, we allow you to customize those dashboards and share them with different parts of your business. We even embed them into a public website as well. So you can embed some key performance indicators into a chart, into a public website. So you can give people a very, very specific view of the, their particular part of the, of the business or the application that's supporting their business. And finally, we give the ability to, to use those, that query language to generate intelligent alerting and proactive monitoring. So you can give um, operations or tech, tech ops the correct types of alerting that are, that's a real anomaly uh, for them to actually go in and perform some root cause analysis against. So you get rid of that um, alert fatigue. So there's four ways uh, of sending metrics into Wavefront. We have agents um, that, that collect uh, data from uh, multiple sources, whether that's something like a Telegraph agent or, or StatsD or uh, particular integrations to technologies um, such as uh, Windows operating systems, Linux operating systems, etc. We can take um, stats from the logs that you're monitoring and we can also take uh, metrics directly from cloud platforms such as Amazon's AWS or Google Cloud or Azure. So we can take those, uh, those metrics straight from uh, the collector within the cloud platform into Wavefront as well. And finally, we have um, more than 135 um, integrations now and we're busy building new integrations and releasing those on a monthly basis. We have support for um, the most uh, popular public cloud providers, Amazon, um, Azure, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, VMware on AWS now. We have support for microservices, so Docker, etc. cetera. Um, we have the ability to collect uh, metrics from StatsD, from Telegraph, etc., And we have the ability then to push those out uh, if it's an alert to create an event uh, and push those alerts to PagerDuty or Slack or, or any webhook that you, could, that you can listen to as well. So we're very lucky to have some extremely positive and, and, and helpful customers um, in Europe and in uh, the US. Uh, Space Ape is based in London. Um, we have a energy provider that provides smart devices in the UK and, and is now starting to roll those out to other parts of Europe, such as Germany, France, and Italy. Um, so they use... Uh, these Wavefront to monitor and police their uh, Internet of Things devices um, to, to manage the, the heating uh, in customers' houses. We have a, a, an online retailer in Germany, uh, Fashion ID, that, that uses this to, to manage their 
cloud native application that supports their, their web presence and, and their online stores. And then we also have Box here as well. So uh, hopefully you've had enough time to read through those, uh, uh, those comments from our customers. And so what I want to do is go straight into a demo. That's what we're here for. That's what you really want to see. So uh, I'll just pass this on now uh, in the slideshow now and just go straight to a demonstration. So here you can see that we've got a, an instance of Wavefront running. If you look at the URL at the top, uh, uh, we go to demo.wavefront.com. Um, so we have the ability to provide a single tenancy for our customers. Uh, so they have their own instance of, of Wavefront um, in either America, the UK, uh, Germany. So we can, we can support customers in multiple regions uh, and give them that single tenant um, back end for, for their metrics monitoring. And you can see here that I've got a dashboard that shows an application uh, with some KPIs around the, the transactions per second. Um, we've got some metrics around the application service, so we understand uh, the average request latency. Uh, we've got metrics for the, the database. We can show these in, in, in different forms as well. So you can see that we've got uh, a line graph. We've got a, an immediate um, view of, of the uh, particular stat got um, stat graphs as well. And if we move out down, you can see that we've also got some technical uh, graphs around um, some stats that are coming out of the operating system and, and the application containers. So we can see CPU utilization, we can see the memory, uh, the cache percentage, etc. We can see what uh, processes are running in there, a number of processes. And we can also add uh, additional uh, metrics in here around things like the, the Twitter state uh, sentiment as well. So we can, we can mix and match the whole stack of the application uh, here. And just going straight back to the top here, we've actually got a, a, a situation here that we need to look at. So you can see at the top left uh, graph, the KPI transactions per second, uh, it's dropped quite significantly. We're into an alert situation and somebody has received an alert here uh, that says that it's dropped by more than 10% um, across, across the application here. So we can see that there is an issue here. Everything else looks fairly normal uh, to me, but what I need to do is start looking at, uh, at changing the dimension of, of the graphs to see if I can see an obvious issue uh, straight away here. So I can change the... Uh, the KPI dimension from the total to, to customer view. So you can see that I'm changing this graph now and I've got multiple entries, multiple customers, but they're all hitting the same issue. So uh, all the transaction rates are dropping quite drastically here. So I need to change the uh, dimension again to see if I can see if there's a particular application server that's causing an issue. And straight away I can see that one of those application servers is actually uh, causing the issue. In this case, it's application five. So the application server five is actually hitting some issues here. So what I can do now is I can um, focus down on, on application five and I can look at um, uh, metrics in here that for, uh, specific to that application server. And you can see, I can still not see what's really going on here. So what I actually want to do now is I actually want to change the view to correlation. So I actually want to correlate many different metrics into one graph to see if I can see uh, uh, an issue with, um, with, with that application server. And now I can see that there is something wrong here. So if on the right hand side, I've correlated all my, my, um, my metrics, and now I can see that, um, that the memory has dropped quite drastically during that time, and my, um, my garbage collector has gone up. So now I know that there's an issue um, with my garbage collection and, and it's causing me to lose memory on the application server. And what's happening is, is that, that that's not being taken out of the load balancing 
uh, scenario here. So, so I can raise a ticket very quickly to, to get that application server taken out uh, of my load balancing scenario uh, and to keep the transaction rates up at a healthy rate. And then I can allow um, my second line, third line support to, to actually take a much closer look at the application server and find out what's really causing this, uh, the garbage collection to, to cause an issue here. So um, that's a very uh, quick view of, of how to get to a, a, an issue within um, a, a dashboard here. I'll take us through a slower um, use case, a simpler use case now. So let's just see if I can drop this down to the bottom. So another another use case here is uh, around. Let me just pick the right one. A, a simple use case where we've got uh, a number of, of servers that I'm collecting the CPU utilization for uh, for a particular application, and you can see there's an event here which tells me that there was a code deployment um, at two fifteen in the morning. And I can see that there's been an issue here. There, there is uh, quite a significant rise in, in uh, utilization across my server farm. But it doesn't look that obvious to me. So what I can do here is I can actually add a new line here, a new query. And I'm going to just average that out. So I'm going to top and tail this with an average. And you'll see that I've built the new graph and I've averaged the CPU utilization across my whole cluster there. And you can see that there is quite a significant rise in CPU utilization uh, at that particular time. Um, now that might be normal. That might be a situation around that sort of time every single day. So I need to see if this is a, a, a true anomaly at all. So I'm gonna take that query uh, again and I'm gonna apply um, Copy paste issues there, bear with me, sorry. So now I'm gonna add another graph here, another chart. And I'm gonna um, add a new function to lag this by one day. So I can compare this with the previous day. Now I can see that there's a clear difference between uh, what's happening today at 2.15 and what happened the previous day at the same time. So I can see that this is a real anomaly now. So I need to go and sort something out. I need to give this to um, the, the development team and let them know that, that when they pushed out the new code, it, it had quite a detrimental effect on the overall performance of my application. So I can click here, create a, a short URL, and and send that paste copy paste that into an email or raise a ticket with that with that link in here when they click on it they will get this this graph uh with this time uh, context in there as well so they can go straight to to the to the uh the root of the the issue here now we understand that, that to, to build queries takes some time to to actually um uh, to actually learn the language and to start building the confidence to build these. So we have the ability for you to actually generate queries uh, with a builder here. So you can see here that I can now search for metrics in here. So I can go to uh, CPU utilization and get my load, load average and just hit return and that will build uh, a query for me now. Once I've got that, I can filter that if I want to. So I can look at creating a, a filter around tags or the source, or I can start putting uh, functions against this now. So I can open up my, my functions and uh, you saw earlier on that I, I used uh, average. So here I can look at uh, averaging this out and if I don't like, want to use that, then I can look at other functions here. 
So uh, here I can look at raw aggregation. So I can look at the uh, the raw suns, the raw max, etc. If I go back, I can look at a moving window for this. So moving average. So I can build this um, these queries using the query builder as well. Once I've done that, I can then choose how to, to plot this out. So I can choose a line plot, point plot. I can have it as a stacked area. And if I want to, I can give this a single stack view so that I can actually produce um, just a number and actually put that into the dashboard as well. If I just go back to the line plot, um, I can then uh, customize this to add particular um, axis styles, etc., as you would do uh, on any uh, dashboard. Um, I can create variables, so I can change the variables as you saw in the other dashboard. Uh, uh, so I can change the dimensions, I can uh, select specific sources from there, I can uh, switch between production and non production environments as well. Now what I can also do is then generate alert if, if, I, if I've set up the, the thresholds as I want and I can create smart alerts. So you can see here, going to the alerts tab, we have some here that are actually firing and you can see the condition that I've set here is against a, a, an alert summary there. Uh, so I can create conditions that actually gen generate the alerts under those conditions and then also um, release the alerts if, if that condition is no longer met as well. And then finally, we've got um, integration. So part of the Wavefront offering is to provide you with uh, integrations to multiple sources so that you can then build uh, very application-centric dashboards. But we give you a head start with these. So you can see here that we've got some featured tiles around certain integrations. So if I were to click on the Kubernetes um, tile, you can see that we give you an overview um, of, of what the integration is. We explain how to set it up. So you can see here that you've got a, a, a YAML that you can provide to generate the proxy. And then you, uh, then you deploy a heapster in there for, for Kubernetes itself. Uh, we show you the metrics that you're collecting. So down the left-hand side, you'll see the metrics that, that, that we are collecting from, from that heapster. And we also provide you with out, an out of the box experience with a dashboard. So here we've got uh, a Kubernetes metrics dashboard. And if I click on it, it gives you a head start. So it gives you a pre-configured set of metrics that we're providing for that particular technology. So here uh, we've got a, a, an integration to our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it has six nodes, uh, 75 pods in there. And if we move down, we're collecting very specific information around Kubernetes here. So we can see the utilization by, by node. Uh, we can see the node names that we're collecting. Um, we can see the CPU usage rates. And then we can also look at the uh, memory page faults, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so we give you a head start with those, uh, with those integrations. If I go back to integrations again, You'll see we have integrations for popular web uh, technologies, uh, Apache, Hadoop, uh, Nginx, et cetera. And then moving down the cloud providers, so Microsoft Azure, Amazon, uh, Google. Uh, we have um, collectors for uh, data stores such as CouchDB, SQL Server, Redis, et cetera, uh, messaging. We have integrations to monitoring tools. So if you're already using some monitoring capabilities, but you actually want to take the metrics from that and build some very application-centric dashboards and provide um, those metrics into those dashboards, then we have integrations to tools such as Prometheus, Nagios, et cetera. Uh, being a VMware, uh, customer, you may have uh, vRealize operations, so we can take the metrics from the guest operating systems 
uh, in a secure manner through the uh, Virilo's operation integration and move those guest OS metrics into um, into uh, Wavefront as well now. Um, a very important part to a lot of our customers is actually being able to instrument within their own code. So, um, so making use of things like StatsD, Node.js, etc., they can generate their own instrumentation within their code and have that pushed into into Wavefront. Um, one of our customers that I know quite well, Space Ape Games, makes a, a, a massive use of that, um, and they're generating metrics around the performance of the uh, the uh, artificial intelligence, the characters in some of their games. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good use of, uh, of metrics in that, in that case. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have integration to alert notification methods, so ServiceNow, PagerDuty, et cetera. Um, we have integrations to authentication, so you can use single sign-on capabilities as well. And then uh, we also have a Tesla integration, which shows you the metrics of your Tesla if you're uh, well off enough to be able to afford one of those cars. And with that, um, I'd like to open it up to uh, questions. Let's see if we have any questions at all. I think I got one here, uh, Rick. Uh, is there a way of building your own integrations? Yes, there is. Yeah, um, the way that the Wavefront uh, works is that uh, we collect metrics, and those metrics are a very simple format. You have uh, the metric name, so the namespace of the metric, uh, date stamp, value, and the source, and that's the format that we that we need the metrics in. And those integrations you can create, you can um, create very easily. Um, we have a number of customers that have created their own integrations to some of their home-built software, but it is a very straightforward process. Yeah. Thank you. And another one that says, "Do you have a Kubernetes example to show?" Yes, I do. Just bear with me. I can show you. Um, a Kubernetes uh, dashboard. So I'll just go back to that and show you here. So it's worth mentioning that um, that Wavefront is actually built on a Kubernetes cluster. So each of our um, customers' environments runs in Amazon in a cloud, but it's actually uh, a Kubernetes cluster uh, with uh, multiple availability zones for high availability. Um, and so, so we actually use Kubernetes ourselves to manage your, your metrics. But here's, here's an example here. So uh, you can see that we've got 115 pod containers in this particular um, integration. And uh, it's using 49.5 gigabytes of, of uh, memory here. Um, and just clicking down on one of these graphs, you'll see how we build this. So this is, this, is running a query against our data store, uh, but it's using Heapster to get the no CPU usage rate uh, out of that cluster. Um, just to finish off, really, um, we have resources for you to, to look up. Uh, we have a wavefront.com website. Um, you can actually use Wavefront in, in a free trial. So there's a, as a way of you signing up for a trial. You have access to all of the uh, integrations that I've shown you and you can actually uh, run uh, those metrics against your, your own data and, and look at it yourselves. There's tools in there that gives you the ability to, to generate the dashboards, generate um, uh, the, the charts and some of those smart alerts as well. And there's a blog that has uh, a number of uh, use cases that are released on a regular basis to, to describe uh, what we've done with our customers. All righty. Um, I think I'll 
take things back over for a minute here. We're about at time. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Rick. And thank you all for joining. Um, and like we said before, um, if you're interested in trying Wavefront for yourself, you can go to wavefront.com slash sign up. We have a free 30 day trial, no credit card required. Um, and you can try uh, some of what we've shown you today for yourselves. Um, also, we will be sending out the recording um, for, of this webinar uh, tomorrow. So check your, check your emails and you will get that. Um, and with that, we will be signing off. So thank you and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.